Wait, what? All right, so we are in After Effects and uh, we're gonna go down to that thing that says uh, create new, I think it said composition. Type in glitch and then go ahead and set your composition to 23 frames per second. Next, drag that footage in over there. You're gonna make it bigger because, or smaller actually. E yeah, I don't know what he's doing. All right, so right here, we're gonna be looking for where the snap starts so we know when to put in the glitch effect. With the layer selected, we're gonna go ahead and push Control Shift D to split the layer so we can apply the glitch effect to it. For continuity purposes, it's important to remember to leave objects exactly where you last had them in the previous shot. So that's why Murray will be leaving the chair exactly how it was set when he got out of it and then spinning it when he's ready to land for the next shot. And again, we're gonna use Control Shift D to go ahead and cut the new shot between Murray snapping and landing so we can apply another glitch filter. Right about here, we're gonna look for the next point in the video where Murray snaps again so that we can separate it and then do the same thing all over again. As you can see, it's a pretty repetitive process, but you know, that's what good visual effects requires. All right, party people, this is where it gets a little complicated. There's a little bit of an extra added element uh, to this next part with the dollar dollar bills. Murray is trying to figure out how he's going to disappear as he throws the money. Okay, so here we're looking for where Murray snaps. So we can press again, Control Shift D to cut that part of the footage. And then we're gonna go ahead and find when the money starts to fall. So we can basically cut straight into the shot of the money exploding per se. Now it's important to notice that Ori's trying his best not to be in front of the camera while the money is being thrown so that he is not in between the money and the camera itself. So he has to make himself hidden as best he can. So what we're looking at here is just a raw preview of what it looks cut for cut. And you can see you actually get a pretty cool visual of what it could look like just cut for cut, you not, not even using the glitch effect. Murray's jumping from place to place. He's snapping to throw the money. And that was simply just done by cutting out the unwanted footage. So now in order to mask Murray out of the shot where he's throwing the money, we're gonna drag in the same footage and we will scale it down to the same size of the other layers. You can see that Murray is scrubbing through the footage to find what I have been told is a clean plate. Once you've found that clean plate, right click on the footage, click time, and then freeze frame. Once you've done this, go ahead and drag it underneath all the rest of the layers. It becomes our background clean plate. Okay, so apparently Mr. Fancy Pants over here presses G and automatically you get that little pen pointy thing. So you just do little fun boxes. Magically, your background clean plate appears and voila, Murray is gone. Only that worked in real life. Okay, so with the layer selected, you're gonna press M and it'll reveal your mask path, which for others is called mask, mask path. and you're gonna kind of move the mask around. Obviously you don't want Murray's hand in there. So with the mask path selected, you're gonna do the little stopwatchy thingy. It'll basically do a keyframe. So in that second, that mask is gonna appear with those certain properties. So it's gonna be in that certain place. But obviously the money is gonna fall down and you don't want the mask to forever remain there. So he's moving it back as time goes on so that he's still out of the shot. But as the money falls, the mask is not over it. So in order to not have a pretty obvious cut in your mask, you can actually press M again for mask properties and use the mask feather. This will help it not be such a harsh cut. Now it'll appear more of a gradual change between the background clean plate and the front layer. If you look closely enough, you'll actually see in the upper left hand corner there's quite a difference in color, and this is um, for a couple of different reasons, possibly. Uh, we shot on a GoPro, so the color balance may be a little bit off. Also, Murray picked a point in the film where the pink light was not on yet for his background clean plate. So he actually is just gonna go to the side, click Effects and Presets 
type in Lumetri color <laughs> and he'll just apply different effects to the background layer to help match it to the forefront of our video. Now that our colors are correct and balanced and the masking is done, we're gonna move on to the next part of the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the part of the video you have all been waiting for, I enter. <laughs> Cue me. So we're gonna flash straight from the money falling to me falling into the chair. So again, we're looking for the part of the video, or sorry, we are scrubbing the part of the video where I fall into the chair. So we can again do the whole control shift D shebang and all that fun stuff. All right, and apparently Murray is an organized freakazoid, so he makes this part of the layer blue, so he knows that's where I enter in. <laughs> One eternity later. Dingus. <laughs> <laughs> You're so happy with yourself. It's important to note also that blue is the color of water and the sky and all things pretty, so obviously he makes me blue. So that's important for all of you to know. Oh my God! Wow! And just because you want all of your videos to the same scale, make sure that when you introduce new footage, you are scaling it to the same as the other layers. So here Murray is duplicating the video of himself with control D. And he's gonna scrub to about two or three frames before he actually snaps. Then he's gonna right click, go to time and select freeze frame. Okay, so the same shot that was duplicated, he's going to drag it up on top of the layer, cut it so that about three or four frames um, on top of him snapping and then him appearing in the next shot are frozen on him just before he snaps. And again, we're gonna want to mask. Uh, there's no mate. Okay, you're gonna press G and you're gonna click around the thing that you want to apply the glitch effect as to. So Murray is gonna be applying it obviously to himself. And to do those curved lines, you're just clicking and dragging. He's gonna continue to do that so that the glitch is only applied to the things inside the mask instead of everything. So in this case, it's only being applied to Murray. We're gonna create a new layer by pressing Control N, which creates a layer, which is kind of in a solid color. Doesn't really matter what color. You're gonna go over to Effects and Presets and find Fractal Noise. Drag that in. Murray is now tweaking with a couple of the numbers and whatever makes his heart happy, he's just gonna Yep, pick it. Here are the final numbers for what the effect should look like. Okay, so he's gonna go to the beginning of that new composition. And the thing we're gonna play with the most is gonna be the evolution. We're gonna start out at zero and make that a keyframe. Then go ahead and scrub to the very end of your composition. Ramp that evolution up to a pretty high number and it just adds that keyframe automatically. You should know that I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. With the matte layer selected that also has the fractal noise effect on it, press Control shift c to pre-compose the layer. Then you're gonna wanna choose move all attributes to the new composition. Now we're gonna drag the layer that we pre-composed on top of the layer that we wanna apply the glitch filter to. Essentially then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut before and after the clip of when we want the glitch filter so it just lines up perfectly with where we want the glitch effect to be. With the layer underneath the glitch effect selected, click the drop down menu and choose Luma Matte. We're gonna add some funness to the glitch. So with the layer that we masked Murray, we're gonna just duplicate it by pressing Control D. Go over to the effects and presets area and we're gonna search for curves. Then apply the curves effect to the layer we just duplicated. Switch the channel to red and then increase it significantly. So we duplicated a layer and that layer that was duplicated had all of its properties duplicated as well, which means it was on Luma. We're gonna head it, go ahead and go to the drop down and pit no track matte. 
On that same layer, press T to bring up the opacity, and we're gonna go ahead and reduce that to about 30%. And then as you can see, Murray is actually just shifting over that layer just a little bit to the left. Using the same process of duplicating, which is Control D, we're gonna make a new layer and change the channel to blue. Same thing as we did with red, we're also gonna increase the blue channel significantly. And once again, we're shifting that whole layer over a little bit to the side. And once again, duplicate the layer. This time we're gonna actually reset because the blue was duplicated with it. Select green and also increase that significantly. And we're gonna shift that one also, but we're gonna be tricky this time and shift it the other way, as Owen Wilson would say. Wow. So a lot of what's coming next is basically gonna be the same thing. We're gonna be creating a freeze frame of where Murray is standing, where we want to apply the glitch filter. So we're gonna mask around him so we can duplicate the layer and create another glitch effect. And just repeat all of what? And you're just going to be repeating all those same steps for wherever you want to apply a glitch effect. Here, Murray even repeats the process for the mouse and the keyboard because he's extra as frick. <laughs> and even the same process for his hand. And we finally end up with this result. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe down below. Stick around for future content. What else am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the rest. And don't forget, there's a bunch of free resources on the website for filmmakers and streamers. Check out the link below. And until next time, keep smiling. Keep shooting. Murray. Seriously? I've been doing all your work for you. Ooh, is that peanut butter? I want some. Uh-uh. Seriously? Again? I just...